that's going to segue into another very powerful tool built into SMI called ChartView. Um, ChartView will allow you to make a graph of just about anything inside the motor. You can report uh, variables, uh, bit status, um, and make little step, you know, step functions to see how bits are turning on and off, uh, velocity, position, torque. Um, we're going to plot the torque of the motor uh, over time. So uh, go into chart view, and that's under tools, and then click on chart view. And you'll get this empty little graph. Okay. Um, click on the, the plus, the little green plus, and uh, that's the add new chart item. The dialog box will pop up. Um, well, it has a few standard parameters, velocity and things, but we're going we're gonna to add torque. So click on custom parameter. You've got to name it. We're going to name it RTRQ. And then um, the pull command is going to be RTRQ. So what's happening is the motor is going to be uh, pinged back and forth between the uh, computer and the motor uh, to report the torque over and over and over again. Um, and we're going to set the maximum and minimum to negative 10,000, positive 10,000. The default's 100,000. So do dial that back a bit. Oh, negative 10,000 to positive 10,000. And a hack has pointed out to me that actually, um, well, for one of the things, if you create a chart, let's say if you create a chart with five or six different commands and you're monitoring your temperature and your current and all those other kind of things to try to diagnose a problem, you can save a chart. Um, and actually, this chart is going to be on your USB stick um, in under demo files. Uh, this is chart one. Okay, class five. Demo files, chart one, rtrq.sch. SCH is um, the uh, smart motor charts. Yeah, you will note though, when you pull up a chart file like this, you may have to change this thing that says motor one, com one. The reason we, we save all this data, we save it to the com port that some person made it up for, but you can go in and get that one entry, say yeah. on com five instead of something. Mm. But bottom line is if you just enter that stuff, you're going to have it anyway. Yeah. But this is a fairly simple chart. I mean, we've seen, you know, you know, five or six different lines on it, monitoring everything from velocity and current and temperature and all that kind of stuff. And it's a nice little diagnostic tool to figure out what the, what's actually going on under the hood of the motor, not just in a you know, snapshot if you were to report a variable, but kind of see how it's changing over time. Um, you know, if you're doing a sinusoidal kind of move, make sure it actually looks like a sine wave, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, once you get that parameter in, you click Add. Uh, and you'll see um, the RTRQ command will be down here at the bottom of the chart. And then you'll hit play, the little, little arrow up here. OK. So it should be cruising along at 8,000. Uh, you can issue an X command. And that'll drop the motor torque down to 0. And you should get this nice little step function. And you can issue t equals negative 8,000. It'll drop down to there. Oh, I should note that if you change t, you have to issue a g after it. Anytime you change a parameter, you change, hit, give a g, and it should, uh, it, it'll jump down to the uh, uh, whatever value was preloaded there. So this one is uh, t equals 8,000, t equals 0, go, t equals 8,000, go, t equals 0, go. And that created this nice little uh, step function here. OK? Everybody got something that kind of looks like that? <laughs> if, I, if I'm moving too quick, anybody, tell me to, tell me to slow down. I'm just, we got a lot of material to get through. I want to make sure we get through it all. But OK, so. OK, yeah, once you see the RTRQ at the bottom, go ahead and hit the play button at the top. And you should get a little red line right across the screen as it's tracking the TRQ value. So while that's running, you go into your terminal window. That's your blue window. And issue those commands. You know, T equals 8,000, go. T equals 0, go. T equals negative 8,000, go. T equals 0, go. And that, these exact commands right here, yielded this, uh, this step function that you see right here, this nice crisp square function right there.
So if you were to issue a TS equals 65,536, that'll cause a one second ramp to get to T equals 8,000. And you issue the same commands, you know, T equals 8,000, go, T equals zero, go, T equals negative 8,000, go, T equals zero, go. You'll see it creates this ramp. So this is T equals zero, it's going along, it's at zero, it's told to go to 8,000, but it's got a ramp. So it takes a second to get up to the 8,000, and it continues along, then it's told to go to zero, and it takes a second to get down to here, and then it's at zero, then it's told to go to negative 8,000, just like that, and it holds there, then it's told to go back to zero, and it has that nice ramp. So that's what your TS command is going to do. It, it, it smooths out your torque ramp so that you don't get that you know, instantaneous punch of torque. Um, like I said, for, if you're rewinding tape, you don't necessarily care how fast it's going, but you want it to move um, or apply a torque. Or if you're homing, you don't want to get uh, uh, any kind of errors as it's moving. Uh, torque moves are a good way to do it, and that's a good way to smooth it out.